Now for an hour of comedy brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, by Chesterfield, the only cigarette that combines mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste, the cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, and by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pains of headaches, neuritis, and neuralgia. In 30 minutes, you'll hear Duffy's Tavern, but now it's radio's newest transcribed comedy show, The Magnificent Montague. The Magnificent Montague, starring Marty Woolley. To an actor like Edwin Montague, the magnificent Montague of the Shakespearean theater, Christmas was just another day backstage. But today, as Uncle Goodhart, hero of an afternoon radio program, Christmas has become a major event, much to his disgust. The Montague apartment is flooded with gifts from his grateful listeners. Lily Boehm, his wife, and Agnes the maid have spent the entire morning trying to break a path through the jam-packed living room. Somewhere in the living room, the phone rings. Agnes, Agnes. Yeah, honey? Will you please answer the phone? I'm trying to. I just can't find it. Did you look behind the totem pole those Eskimos sent him? I'm behind the totem pole. Agnes, Oh, wait, here got... it is, in the dog sled. Hello? Yeah, this is Uncle Goodhart's. American Express? Oh, no, look, look, we're full up. Hold it for a while, will you? Yeah, hang on to it. Well, what was that? A little something for Uncle Goodhart from the Elks in Lindale, Minnesota. Really? What was it? An elk. <laughs> An elk? Well, the least we can do is send it back with a nice note to that elk's lodge. Say, I got a great idea. Well, what is it? Let's keep it and send him back to the elks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Agnes, stop being ridiculous. Oh, brother. One day with Montague and them elks, we'll all be odd fellows. <laughs> Agnes, won't you try and get along with my husband? Don't worry about us, honey. We have a perfect understanding. We hate each other. <laughs> Agnes, do you know how he feels about it? The magnificent Montague of the theater sinking to playing Uncle Goodhart on radio. I thought all these gifts from listeners would get a rise out of him. Don't give up hope, honey. With that corn he dishes out on his program, somebody must send him a time bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these Christmas cards. How will I ever... Oh, oh, here's a letter for you. Special delivery. For me? Hmm. Must be a bite. Let me see. Ah, oh, it's from my sister Helen in Hutchinson, Kansas. Listen to this. Dear Ag, the whole family's down with measles except our son, Junior. We got to get him out of the house, so we're sending him on to you. She kidding? <laughs> well, Agnes, that's wonderful. We've never had a child in our home for Christmas. Honey, are you out of your mind? A ten-year-old kid in this house with Montague? He's too young to go. <laughs> Agnes, I could explain to Nothing him. Nothing doing. It says he will arrive Friday on the Super Corn Husker, 605. <laughs> 605 New York time. Grand Central Station. Agnes, that's today. Honey, I'll pack my grip, pick up the kid at the station, take him out to Jersey to Pond Mars and spend Christmas there. Oh, Agnes, Christmas without you. Oh, I think Edwin is up. Here come the elk, calling its mate. Oh, Agnes, get that dog set away from the front of his door. Too late. And the good boy. Edwin, are you all right? All right? Quite. Outside of the fact my legs are broken, I may never walk again, I'm tip-top. <laughs> oh, Edwin. Lily, will you please untangle me from this dog harness? <laughs> will somebody do something? Mush, mush. <laughs> Agnes, am I dear, Agnes? If I ever regain the use of my right foot again, I know just where I'm going to put it. <laughs> well, do 
something. <laughs> now, Edwin, don't act like a baby. A baby? Edwin, eat your breakfast. Lily, I have no appetite. Anyway, uh, I've got to get to the radio station for my broadcast. Oh, did you look over today's Uncle Goodhart script? What do you think killed my appetite? <laughs> All you hear on the radio is jingle bells, jingle bells. You mean they have Uncle Goodhart involved in Christmas already? 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 They've had me dashing through the snow since April. <laughs> Edwin, everybody loves this season. I tell you, Lily, if I hear I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, once more I'm going to personally horsewhip Irving Berlin. <laughs> Where's Agnes? Oh, she's packing. Packing? My fondest of dreams have come true. She's been drafted. <laughs> No, Edwin. She's just leaving for the holidays. She won't be with us. This Christmas without Agnes. Ah, oh, there is a Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, here she comes to say goodbye. Agnes, the dog Merry Christmas. <laughs> Agnes. Agnes, are you all right? Oh, oh, my ankle. Edwin, do something. Did poor Ilhi Agnes fall down and go boom? <laughs> Let me see your little footing. Keep your distance, you monster. <laughs> Here, honey, let me lift you. Oh, Edwin, she may be hurt. She may? A jingle bell. <laughs> How can you? I'm late for my broadcast. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Uncle Goodhart, how can I ever thank you? No, no, Rocco. You talked the police in to let me open up my pool room again. <laughs> <laughs> Your top's Uncle Goodhart. Oh, Rocco, my boy, now you must work to win back the respect of the families whose kids you let hang around your pool room. Naturally, they're a little peeved. After all, you did teach the little tykes how to steal cars. You encouraged them to rob candy stores. You taught them how to roll drunks. <laughs> Rocco... Oh, Rocco, parents are funny that way. <laughs> oh, Uncle Goodhart, it was my only way out. I guess I'm just no good. No. <laughs> oh, no, Rocco, no, no, no. There's a wide streak of goodness in you if you do what you tell me you're going to do. Scout's down, Uncle Goodhart. This Christmas, there's going to be a Christmas tree on the snooker table. And I'm hanging holly on the slap machines. <laughs> and free pool for the kids all day Christmas. Oh, Rocco, here are the keys back to your pool room. Oh, Uncle. Uh, <laughs> go out into the sun and life. <laughs> So ends another episode of Uncle Goodhart, brought to you by Shalimar Soap. And here is Uncle Goodhart with his thought for the day. When your Christmas tree sets your house on fire, and no fire trucks answer the bell, when the firemen do come five hours late, won't you step up and say, Noel? <laughs> Mr. Montague. Eureka. I did it again without getting ill. <laughs> Crackerjack show, Mr. Montague. As our director, wasn't it, Zinza? Oh, that was a lollapalooza, Mr. Montague. <laughs> well, shut up. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I suppose we'll see you at the Christmas party. See me at what party? Our sponsor, Shalimar Soap, is giving a little celebration. It's just an office party. We roll back the desks, open a few bottles. Ink, no doubt. <laughs> be good for you to show up, Mr. Montague. The top money men of the company will be there. Oh, the warden is letting them out for the day. 
Uh, it's really jolly, Mr. Montague. Uh, Mr. Montague. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want this to come as a surprise to you, but I promised my kids they could call you up Christmas morning to wish you a... Zinza! <laughs> Then, sir, should that unfortunate event happen, I can only promise that my Christmas greeting to them will make them old before their time. (laughs) I assure you their hair will turn white before the receiver falls from their stricken little hands. Mr. Montague, I don't think you like children. Give this man six silver dollars and a box of stickers. (laughs) But, Mr. Montague, what is Christmas without children? Paradise. We'll be back with a magnificent Montague in just a moment. Now, here's a word from RCA Victor. Can you imagine what it would cost if for Christmas this year you were to buy your family season tickets to a hundred sports events, a hundred musical concerts, a thousand shows? That would be mighty expensive. But there is a simple and inexpensive way to give your family season tickets to all this fine entertainment for this year and the years to come. Give them the finest possible Christmas present. A beautiful new RCA Victor television, radio, and phonograph combination. When you do, you'll be giving ringside orchestra tickets. For RCA Victor, million-proof television is matchless. Its excellence has been proven in over a million homes. And for music and radio listening, your family will hear the best through the finest tone system in RCA Victor history, the famous Golden Throat. This Christmas, give your family the surprise of their lives and the fun of a lifetime. Give a handsome RCA Victor million-proof combination. See them tomorrow at your RCA Victor dealers. And now back to the magnificent Montague Having aired his tender feelings about children on Christmas He is on his way home from his broadcast But Agnes and Lily have problems of their own Honey, please, get me a crutch, anything, but I gotta get out of here Agnes, you just sit there The doctor said you cannot stand on that ankle for at least a week Oh, no My nephew Junior's due in at 6.05 What am I gonna do about him? Agnes Junior is going to spend the holidays here with us. Oh, no. Edwin will be crazy about Junior. And when he sees you're sick, he'll probably try and mother you. Like one of them animals that devour their young. (laughs) Agnes, please. I'll get it. Edwin, I have a wonderful surprise for you. Hello, Lily. Uh, What? Uh, Oh, Agnes's leg is broken. Lily, that is a wonderful surprise. (laughs) Hello, Mother. Edwin, don't take your coat off. You have to rush right down to Grand Central Station to meet a train. Oh, no, Lily. Not your mother. No, it can't be. Why, it's too warm out. Too warm out? Yes, she said it would be a cold day before she ever came here again. (laughs) No, no, Edwin. Now relax. Agnes's sister is sending her ten-year-old son, Junior, to spend Christmas with us. Excuse me, I have a fig newton in the oven. (laughs) Agnes, don't get up. Well, Agnes, so this is your new strategy. You found you couldn't drive me crazy by yourself, so you're calling up reinforcements. (laughs) Edwin, I want Junior here for Christmas. Christmas is all our lives have been spent in dingy dressing rooms or in strange cities on tour. Just once I want to get a tree and toys and spend Christmas as it's meant to be spent with a child. Lily, stop that blubbering. You sound like Ma Perkins being dragged behind a truck along the road to life. <laughs> Is there about Christmas that brings out all this horrible, nauseating, miserable sentimentality? And bless us all, said Tiny Tim. (laughs) Ah, Lily, it might be a good idea to have a tree this year. And I know just what I'm going to hang from the top branch. (laughs) Deck the halls with rows of holly. Quiet! I've never asked you for anything before. All right, all right. I'll go and pick up Junior. Oh, wait! How will you know him? 
Well, he's related to Agnes, isn't he? How many kids can there be at Grand Central Station with two heads? <laughs> Agnes, how will he know it's your nephew? Well, the way Helen always does it, she puts a tag marked Junior around his neck. He's on the Super Corn Husker, due in at 6.05. The Super Corn Husker, death, where is thy sting? <laughs> Now, that's a big help. A good course in diction would probably put the railroads back on their feet again. Oh, there's the information desk. Pardon me. Yes, sir? Can you give me some information about a train? Well, if I can't, the railroad's been paying me for nothing for 37 years. <laughs> oh, no, no. Look, Milton. <laughs> All I want is some information. Well, what do you want to know, son? Just what track does the Super Corn Husker arrive on? It's due any second. Super Corn Husker? Well, let me look at the schedule. <laughs> Super cheap, that wouldn't be it, would it? No. No, let me see, let me see. Uh, Mona Lisa, man, I've named you Mona Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Bing. Any other time, I'd be panting for more. The train is Drew. Ah, here we are, lad. Super Cornusker. Oh, that. Come in about an hour ago. An hour ago? Attention, please. A young boy has been found. His tag around neck, Junior. He is being held at the Traveler's Aid desk. Junior? Where's that Traveler's Aid? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I help you? I've come to claim Junior. Thank heavens. <laughs> Junior? Here he comes. Junior! Yeah. <laughs> this gentleman here has come for you. You're kidding. <laughs> He has one thing in his favor. He didn't walk in on all fours. <laughs> Look, Junior, I've come to take you home. Oh, yeah? My aunt's supposed to pick me up. Police! Police! <laughs> Junior, Junior, your auntie couldn't come for you. She's had a bad accident. She got shot in one of these New York gang wars, huh? Just like it says in the comic books. Oh, please, say she was shot, please. Obviously. Obviously a product of progressive education. <laughs> uh, look, Junior, I'll take you to your aunt. Let's go. Hey. What? The joke's over. You can take off the muff. <laughs> the what? The bush, the whiskers, the ear bay. Look, Junior, my little man, if you make one more reference to my beard... I will twist the features of your little face back into human form. <laughs> now, come along. Chip, 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 ain't we touchy today? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go and stay close to me so they won't notice you're not on a leash. <laughs> Touché. That's French, you know. I read that in a book my father had hidden in his desk. <laughs> Just a typical healthy American boy. Hurry up. Okay, here we are. Where? At the newsstand. Get me a comic book. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind? I run out of comic books on a train. It's been over 30 minutes since I've seen a comic book. I'm getting stale, do you hear me? Stale, stale, stale! My dear little man, I am not going to buy you any comic books. You're kidding. I am not kidding. I am not going to buy you any comic books. You ain't? I ain't. Okay, you asked for it. Here it comes. I'll kill myself! That's what I'll do! I'm going to kill myself! And I'll put it on you! Where's the gas pipe? Where's the gas pipe? Where's the gas pipe? Quiet. Quiet. Now, 
now push the eyeballs back in your head. I'll get you a comic book. Gee, you're a nice man. What crimes I must have perpetrated in my lifetime to deserve this. All right, Junior, what comic book do you want? Anything with blood and girls on the cover. Here, some real gory ones, eh? Uh, we'll take these. Hey, hold it just a minute. How did this Peter Rabbit book get in here? It scares me. It keeps me up at night. Well, throw it into the ash can, but don't let go of it. <laughs> well, now, that's good cat. Okay, but first get me some candy to eat on the way over. Uh, no candy. No candy? No candy, and that's final. Okay, stand back. Now, wait. I'll kill it up! I'll kill it up! Stop. All right, all right. Pick out some candy. I find candy very relaxing. And it clears up my complexion. Hurry up. Candy bar. Okay. Take your candy. Here's the money. Big spender. Let's find a cab and get home. Home? I finally get to New York, and you're going to coop me up in some tenement. No siree, Bob. We are going home. But I want to see all them famous sights in New York. I don't want to waste a minute. Uh, we'll pass the Empire State Building. You can see the Statue of Liberty. Nah. I want to see the real landmarks. The places I dreamed about all my life. This is what New York means to me. I want to see that... That cigar store where they bumped off Dutch Schultz. <laughs> the little house with the picket fence. Where Mitre Incorporated hung out. The barbershop where they got Legs Diamond. I want to sit in the same chair. My dear boy, if I am sure of nothing else, I am sure of this. You will sit someday in a chair. <laughs> and it is my fervent hope that this good right hand of mine will be the one that pulls the switch. <laughs> Okay, okay, sir, no sightseeing. I'll settle for Roseland. I was walking along on my... Ow! The air! Look over here! Look over here! Taxi! Taxi! Look, honey, you're going to stop playing with that electric train. You'll have it busted before Junior gets here. Oh, I'm so excited. Doesn't the Christmas tree look lovely? When are they getting back from the station? There they are. Edwin! Hello, Lily. Well, where's Junior? Back in the hall. He's carving his initials on our neighbor's dog. <laughs> Junior, in here. Okay, okay, okay. Hello, Junior. Hiya, babe. <laughs> well, Agnes, here is your nephew. Agnes, what's wrong? Nothing except I've never seen this boy before in my life. You got the wrong kid. But Agnes... Agnes? My aunt's name is Florabelle. <laughs> Edwin, what have you done? I got dog of and snatched. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait. Let's not lose our head. What a smooth job, Whiskers. I got to hand it to you. You pulled it off like clockwork. Quiet, quiet. I'm taking you right back to the station. Oh, are you a chump? I'm worth ten G's. Shut up! My Aunt Florabelle's probably got New York crawling with cops looking for you. And with that chin shrubbery, you ain't hard to describe. <laughs> Neither are you. <laughs> Edwin, do something. Take him back. Easy, honey. Please, let me think. Now, quiet. Now, here's how we work it. You keep me holed up here till the heat's off, see? Then you send the ransom note. No handwriting. You cut the letters out of the newspapers. <laughs> What is this creature? He makes Dillinger look like a choir boy. <laughs> what about my nephew? He's probably standing... The telephone. Don't touch it, Edward. It's probably the police. Well, I'll just put a handkerchief over the mouthpiece and just... Ow! Answer it, Lily. Hello? Who? Oh, Agnes, she's hurt her ankle. She can't come to the phone. What? Yes, I'll tell her. Thank you. What is it? Your sister. It wasn't the measles. They took your nephew off the train in time. Well, that takes care of one. I'm taking Wolf Boy back to the station. <laughs> Edward, the police. Lily, it may mean jail. It may even mean the chair. But anything, rather than have this thing in the same house with me. 
Come on, Scarface, let's go. <laughs> I tell you, Whiskers, we could pull this off. Ow, oh, let go of my ear! The ear! The ear! Agnes, I just know something's happened to Edwin. I'll bet he's in jail. Honey, any minute I'm expecting a phone from the police begging us to take him off their hands. <laughs> Edwin, you're safe. We was all set to bake your cake with a file in it. Agnes, please. Haven't I had enough for one day? Oh, here, yeah, Edwin, sit down. Oh, wait, wait. I'll turn off the Christmas tree lights. Leave them on, dear. Oh. What happened? I took him back to the traveler's aid desk. His Aunt Florabelle was there. Did she look worried? Not until she realized she had him back. <laughs> oh, kid. She gave me her card. Flora Bell Withers lives across town. What a kid. Oh, you were right, Edwin. It would have been terrible for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is it, Edwin? He wanted to see the cigar store where Dutch Schultz was pumped off. <laughs> what an imagination. I know. Bright little fellow, you know. Spoke French, you know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I kill myself. I kill myself. Where's the gas? Where's the gas? <laughs> Good little actor. Yeah. Edwin, why don't you rest in your den until we get dinner ready? Okay, it's quiet around here. Call me for dinner, dear. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells. Hello? Uh, uh, Mrs. Weathers? Uh, Mrs. Florabel Withers? Well, this is Edwin Montague. Yeah. Yes, the man who... You thought kidnapped your nephew. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Withers, I was thinking, uh, since I caused you so much anxiety, the least I could do is to take Junior off your hands for Christmas. Yes, Junior. No, I'm not drunk. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, after all, we have a tree, an electric train, and, and what is Christmas without children? Merry Christmas! Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. Now here's a word from a very good friend of yours. This is Bob Hope. Can we steal a second? Say, Bob, did you notice there's a new Chesterfield poster of you around town? Yeah, I saw one in a drugstore the other day. I'm dressed up as Santa Claus. Yeah, and you're holding a carton of Chesterfields with a picture of being you-know-who dressed up as Santa Claus. And you're saying, for Christmas gifts, here's the answer. Yep, Crosby for Christmas. Bob, seriously, why did they make Crosby pop a Santa Claus in the Christmas carton instead of you? Well, hi, by tradition, Santa Claus is an old man. Yes. <laughs> Always carrying a sack full. <laughs> Well, in all fairness to Bing, Bob, I must say it's a very attractive gift. And it's packed with 200 of those always milder Chesterfields, which make as fine a gift as anyone could give or anyone could get. And, folks, if you want to prove that just for yourself, make that Chesterfield mildness test. Open them, smell them, compare them, and smoke them. Chesterfield, Chesterfield, always wins first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So open a pack, give them a smell. Then you'll smoke them. See you Tuesday night, folks, for Chesterfield. Join us again next Friday, same time, same station, for another transcribed visit with the magnificent Montague starring Monty Woolley. Created and directed by Nat Hyken, written by Nat Hyken and Billy Friedberg. Anne Seymour was Lily Bowen, Kurt Kelton was Agnes. Also heard in tonight's cast were Arnold Stang, Johnny Gibson, Art Carney, and John Griggs. Now this is Don Pardo saying stay tuned for Duffy's Tavern, which follows immediately. <laughs> 